Okay, so let's consider uh, three specific things that are related to Laplace transforms called poles, zeros, and region of convergence. So you've already seen region of convergence, but I'll do a couple of examples to uh, give, the, give it a bit more uh, depth. So let's start with a simple thing. Remember that the delta function is defined like this. Delta t is 1 at the value 0 and 0 elsewhere and has a unit area. And the integral of the delta of t function, which is given, is called u of t, unit of t, and it looks like this. It's a 0 here, and over here it's 1. And it's defined by integral minus infinity to infinity, delta t dt. OK, now you can see that the unit function is not uh, absolutely integrable because the in integral from minus infinity to infinity of ut dt is equal to infinity, and it's not bounded. But we can still compute the Laplace transform. And the Laplace transform excess of is given by integral minus infinity to infinity, uh, ut e to the minus st dt. This is just plugging in ut for xt. And since ut is 1 in the range 0 to infinity, this lower limit goes away. It becomes 0 in the lower limit, infinity in the upper limit. And then ut is 1, so it becomes just minus e to the st dt. And uh, this is given by e to the minus st by minus s at the values infinity and 0, which is, uh, which is just given, which is just uh, 1 over s if uh, the real part of s, the real s, is greater than 0. Obviously, if s is 0, then it's undefined. But if s is, if real of s is greater than 0, and uh, then this is going to be uh, given by 1 over s. So this statement over here is what is the Laplace transform of the unit function. So it's got two parts to it. This is the function x of s, and this part is the region of convergence, or ROC. If the region of convergence tells us that x of s is only defined when the real value of s is greater than 0. Because if the, if the real value of s is less than 0, then this portion over here is going to be uh, actually increasing over time. So the value at infinity is going to be infinity. And if it's actually 0, then this value over here is going to be giving you a zero, 1 over 0 form. It's going to be infinity again. So we do require it to be greater than 0 over here. So this explains what the, uh, uh, what, what the region of convergence is. And note that if s equals to 0, then x of s is equal to infinity. And this is what's called a pole of the function. A pole of the Laplace transform is the point, or the set of points at which the transform takes on the value infinity. OK, let's do one more example to kind of fix ideas. Let's look at the function xt, which is defined only in the right-hand half plane, which is given by ut e to the at, uh, at the, uh, ut e to the at, uh, and uh, we are we are going to specify that a is a real number. It's not a complex value; it's a real number. So it's essentially your the exponential function that you had trouble with earlier with the Fourier transform. And we're defining it only in the right half plane. That's why you multiply it by ut. That means uh, we don't care about the left half plane of uh, this figure. So again, we can plug it in into our function. So x of s is given by integral minus infinity to infinity, uh, ut, a, e, sorry, e to the at, uh, e to the minus st dt. And again, because it's ut, we can remove ut by going to changing the limits from 0 to infinity. And it's going to be e to the minus s minus a t dt. And this, of course, is given by e to the minus s minus a over minus s minus a. And at the values infinity and 0. And we have to, again, be careful to see where is this properly defined. Uh, this value on top is going to be uh, at, at the value infinity. This is going to be going to 0 if 
it's going to sort of uh, diminish if the real value of s minus a is greater than zero. Uh, that is, the real value of s is greater than a. So this condition tells us the value, uh, the, the region of the plane for which the integral is defined. And if that integral is defined, then it evaluates to 1 over s minus a. So again, this part over here is, is what we is, is excess. And this part over here is the region of convergence. And so we can therefore write the uh, using our standard terminology, u of t e to the minus a t, it corresponds to uh, the Laplace transform 1 over s minus a with the real of s greater than a. And recall, just compare this with what we talked about earlier. So we said that uh, over here, if you were to take this function e to the a t, then you want to make sure that sigma is greater than a. And in fact, sigma is just real part of s. And so uh, that's exactly what we get uh, when we when we show over here, so when we compute the math over here. So here is the the uh, more precise statement of that. Now, what if s equals a? If s equals a, then x of s is equal to infinity. So there is a pole at a. And so that is the pole of the system over here. Um, I've now considered this for a real A, but um, it also works for complex value of A, where we have to make sure if A equals sigma plus J omega, then the region of convergence is given by S is greater than, sorry, real part of S is greater than sigma. And again, it's fairly intuitive why this is the case, because this is what makes sure that we are dampening the exponential rise by sigma sufficiently fast uh, by using a large enough value of the real part of S. Now, the values for a, of S where the transform vanishes, so where the uh, S such that uh, X of S equals to zero is called the zero of the transform. I call the zeros of the transform. And uh, to compute, to understand that, let's look at the, let's look at the of sinusoid. So let's again look at the sinusoid given on the right-hand half plane, uh, which is xt equals u of t cos omega 1t, where omega 1 is some specific value omega 1. So to understand this, we're going to, to sorry, you compute the tra Laplace transform. We're going to use a simple trick. We're going to rewrite cos as uh, using the Euler's formula as u of t uh, e to the j omega 1 t plus e to the minus j omega 1 t by 2. OK, and so x of s is going to be given by integral minus infinity to infinity. The same thing over here, ut e to the minus j omega t over here. And what we'll do is, since it's ut, we'll just replace the lower level with 0 to infinity. That makes ut go away. And then we're just going to have uh, the following integral, 0 e to the uh, j omega 1 e to the minus st dt plus integral 0 to infinity e to the minus j omega 1 e to the minus st dt by 2. Okay, so this is uh, pretty straightforward. And remembering the analysis we did over here where we said, okay, ut e to the at goes to 1 over s minus a, and uh, this is going to be obviously going to be half, and then the first value evaluates to 1 over s minus j omega 1 plus 1 over s plus j omega 2. Sorry, j plus, oh, okay, what am I doing here? Uh, oops, j, <laughs> uh, s plus j omega 1 uh, over here. And we are going to assume that uh, real the region of convergence is the real part of S is greater than 
uh, zero because uh, we, do, the, we don't have any sigma part to that. It's just pure J mega one. And then this reduces to uh, S, plus, uh, sorry, um, S over S square plus omega one square. And then again, real part of S greater than zero. So this over here is the transform of the uh, of the cosine function ut. In fact, the, the limited cosine function ut cos omega one t uh, it goes to here in the Laplace transform, and uh, and and when when the value of uh, when the value uh, s is zero then this value is going to be zero. So for s equals zero, x of s equals to zero, and this is, is the zero of the, uh, of the transform. So, uh, so we have to uh, keep track of the fact that re s is greater than zero, and at s equals zero, x s equal to zero, and then that's the zero of the transform. And, and the, okay, so let's stop with that.